If you're doing the right things, how could it be the wrong path? It's when you do the wrong things that you get misled by the wrong light, thinking that they have it figured out for you when you know that this is a gradual process. All right, all right. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Mindset Mastery. I'm your host, AZ Araujo, and I do appreciate you coming on board and just checking in to start our Monday just right, to start our week right, and really just to plan ahead, right? Because we all understand that, you know, what, what appears suddenly is, is a gradual progression of, of a slow process of actually getting there, right? It, and sometimes, whether it's good or bad, um, it's, it's going to happen and it's going to be visible and it somewhat seems like it's all of a sudden. And I want to go ahead and tell you what's happened here over the last week or so. And it seems like every week is just an adventure. Another thing that <laughs> I'm learning, another uh, more lessons that, you know, life is teaching me. And I'm getting better at uh, being able to analyze uh, what's coming my way and, and to be able to shift and pivot accordingly. Because I know what I'm striving for is going to require a different type of mindset, a different type of skill set that I realize I can't be thrown off my game by something so simple. And uh, you probably remember less than two weeks ago, I told you about some plumbing issues that I've had in my house. Uh, just to give you a quick recap, uh, we had our landscapers um, uh, hit one of our sewer lines and it was an accident. It was an accident and, uh, and I'll be forthcoming in that because I didn't know where they were at and they asked me a few times and and I just didn't have a clue and of course uh, once it was hit I wanted to lay blame on them right because it caused a, a massive backup uh, literally into my house a foul stench it, it, it was just a big mess uh, we had to use every towel every comforter anything that can soak up any type of water and you know things that came along with that and, and just throw them in trash bins. We didn't even try to salvage them, right? So that evening we find ourselves at 9.30 at night going to Target and just buying new towels, uh, new sheets and, and things of that nature. Um, and it's something that we just realized we needed to just take care of, right? But um, so one of the things that I, I did was to communicate that to the contractor. I said, hey, you guys need to fix this so it, it, it doesn't happen again and the plumber suggested one of these um one of these flushes right because there's still debris in the pipes that's what caused the backup because the landscaping the landscaping rock and and dirt and all sorts of things started piling in there so uh, every time we flushed it just kept on getting caught there until we were made aware of the issue so uh fast forward two weeks later um you know Nothing was really done because everything was was working as normal. So I thought, okay, not a big deal. Um, this can wait. Uh, this is going to be a six month process. So I wasn't really uh, emphasizing how important it was for them to fix the sewer. So I didn't pay attention, and and neither did they. And and um, uh, you know, it was Thursday night. <laughs> All of a sudden, we became aware of another issue. So. Um, Sunday evening, I'm already prepared, uh, Thursday evening, I'm already preparing for bed and it's about 9 30, 9 45. And I get this phone call from my daughter, right? From her room. She says, dad, it smells really bad over here. It smells like, you know, like a gas or it smells like sewer. It just smells really, really bad. So the first thing that I thought was like, okay, it must be the gas line. Okay. And I'll tell you why, because earlier in that day, um, I had one of the contractors say, hey, I have to turn on the pilot again uh, for your water heaters because they were dealing with, with uh, gas uh, piping, right, uh, to prepare for my gas grills. So that little deposit then, right, that little seed all of a sudden became this big issue where I'm like, oh my gosh, we have a gas leak, right? Uh, because it, the odor was strong and it seemed to kick on as soon as the air conditioner came on. Okay, so, the, so this is 9.30 at night. We did not notice anything prior to. So I'm thinking, okay, we got to get this fixed. It's a gas line. So, of course, I call the emergency number from Southwest Gas and they're like, yes, yes, okay. You need to get out of the house and, um, you know, we're going to send somebody over right away. 
And of course, uh, you know, it's 100 degrees outside, even at 9.30 at night. I'm like, you know, what? how about I just go to the other side of the house, <laughs> right? So that was a short-term solution. But then I realized that my daughter's um, toilet wouldn't flush, right? It, it just, it would just go down slowly. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call the plumber right now as well, uh, just in case it isn't the gas line, but it's actually another plumbing issue. And I was going to wait until the morning because I don't want to deal with it, right? 9.30 at night, I'm already decompressed. I'm ready to go to bed. I don't want to have to wait for the plumber to come in. And then I start thinking, what happens if I wait? What happens if I now put this for something else I have to do the following day? And it was going to be a busy day for me already. Why am I making it more difficult for myself? Why don't I just handle it now? So I get on the phone and I, and I call the last plumber that we used and, and they couldn't send somebody over until 8 o'clock the following morning. And I was like, okay, I was, I was going to go ahead and, and accept that. But again, I was like, it's already busy. I'm up already. I have to wait for the gas company to come over. So I called a different company. And they were able to get somebody uh, within the hour. So within that hour that I'm waiting, the gas company comes in. And I'm trying to explain the situation. I'm like, hey, I think I smell gas. They're, they're repiping you know, the, the lines outside for my gas grill, so it's gas. <laughs> So, uh, you know, he steps in and, you know, he's a professional. He does this all the time. As soon as he steps into my house, he's like, this is not gas. <laughs> this is not gas. All right. So it, it was actually a sewer smell. <laughs> so that was a little embarrassing, right? Because here he is with this contraption, which, you know, sends him a special signal to determine if it's gas or not. It's almost like a Ghostbuster, you know, type of mechanism. All right. It's like a backpack with this with this, you know, huge rod coming out and this big circle uh, into it. And I'm like, all right, so it's supposed to go off and it's gas. And he knew right away it wasn't. He's like, well, since I'm here, I have to go through the protocol. Since I'm here, I have to go through every room to be able to make sure 100% without a shadow of a doubt that this is not a gas line. So I'm like, okay, wondering to myself, then where is this gas smell? I mean, this, this, this stench, this, this sewer smell coming from, right? So we w go ahead and, and start on um, the girl's side of the house. And we go into her, my daughter's uh, bedroom. And he's, you know, going around and there's nothing happening. We go to her bathroom. We go around. Everything seems clean, right? It's, it's, it doesn't flush, but everything's clean, okay? Then we go into, we have this teen room right? Where we have a couch set up for them. We have their, like their video game consoles. And, um, we go into that bathroom cause that door was closed uh, all, you know, the entire time. So I open up the door. I'm the first one to go in and I get smacked with this stench and this odor. I look over to the shower and yes, it's like a, a brownish water there again. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, not again, not again. And um, so he tells me, well, at least we found where the problem's coming from, right? So what was happening, every time that the AC would come, it would turn on, it would just send the odor through the entire house. So I'm like, oh, dang, I don't think we have enough towels for this, right? <laughs> so, you know, the, he goes through the entire house to uh, double check everything. And within that, that time frame, the, the uh, plumber comes in. And, um, you know, I, I knew this time exactly where the, the returns were at. I knew exactly where everything was at. So he started this process right away. And, you know, he was able to correct it and fix it. And he suggested the same thing the previous company suggested. Hey, this needs to be uh, jet uh, flushed, right? Or you're going to have this problem again. And uh, so they corrected the problem. And as soon as they, you know, ca caused a drain, all the water went back down and, you know, the, 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 the odor started going away. And, you know, by the time they were done, it's 1230 at night, 1230. And um, the whole time I was thinking, man, I'm going to be tired tomorrow because I need to still wake up at four. I have commitments on Friday to show up on time. Uh, I have a workout partner that's there all the time. I don't want to let him down. I don't want to get off my schedule. So the entire time I'm telling myself, man, uh, this is a thing I have to deal with. Now I'm not, I'm going to feel tired the entire day and uh, I have to go work out. But it's, it's funny where, you know, when problems occur, where your mind wants to go along with it, right? We want to create excuses or reasons why we can't live up to our commitments. 
We want to think of reasons why we can't market today. We, can, we want to think of reasons why we can't text somebody else today because this deal fell through or this client promised us that they were going to work with us. Now they're working with somebody else, right? So our mind wants to go into that negativity, right? And for me, it was like, well, I can't get up early because I'm going to be tired and I got a lot of things to do that following day. And, uh, I, and I was able to catch myself all of a sudden. And I'm going to get into that conversation because, you know, it, it's our responsibility to catch our, the negative mindsets suddenly and begin this process of pivoting and shifting where this negativity wants to come in. And I said, you know what? I'm going to wake up with the most energy ever. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to have a, a great day. And I went to bed thinking that, not thinking I am going to have a bad day. I'm going to wake up tired because that was going to happen if I continue to feed that to my mind. I was going to wake up the next morning tired. I was going to not be as effective as I would like to be. But because I shifted my mindset at that moment with all the negativity, being up at 1230 at night, having to pay again, right to this to this plumber now i'm like four thousand dollars into this right well by the time i finish with the flush and i, I can go there about all of the all of the things that i have to over uh that, that i have to pay for that um weren't part of you know what i wanted uh as far as my expenditures right the, these sudden expenditures that all of a sudden send us down this tailspin and i'm like no no no. i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and wake up with this intensity with this 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 vigor this 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 approach that it was going to be a great day and before that you know i i was talking to carla because she's up and my kids are up and they have school the next day um and i tell carla man i'm so happy i'm not doing what he's doing and i even shifted that thought process i'm so thankful for him for doing what he does and it sent me down this path of like realizing that this is just another thing that doesn't really require much focus or intention. My job is just to get through it. So the following day, I went ahead and, and called the, the plumbing company and they came out and they did a full in, uh, external flush, right? So that this doesn't happen again. They fixed the pipe and, you know, a part of me was like, I'm going to have the contractor fix this or I'm going to have the contractor take care of this. It's their fault. But as I start seeing them and appreciating what they've done thus far, right? And I've seen them come in day in and day out, just working their butts off. Uh, th there was no way for them to know that that was there. So why should I make them responsible for it? I don't want the cost, but I shouldn't shove it to the next person. You know, that, that would be me, uh, you know, uh, blaming somebody else for something that was essentially my fault. I didn't know where the returns were at. And at the end of the day, I know that my plumbing is, is, is good, it's functional, and that it won't give me any problems moving forward. And more importantly, I know exactly where they're at for future problems if that does occur. But things that happen all of a sudden is a, is a slow buildup towards that. And it can happen in the positive light for you or it can happen in the negative light. You see, over the last week, week and a half, it was slowly building up to when... I was made aware of it. It was a sudden odor and a sudden stench, right? And it, at 10 o'clock at night. And this is how things happen. It's, it's these gradual deposits. And it really was a gradual buildup, right? A gradual deposit until all of a sudden it's coming out of one of the showers. And this, is, this can happen in anything that we do. And I've, I've heard this many times before about individuals that, you know, have, have not necessarily taken care of themselves. And then all of a sudden they notice how bad things have gotten from a picture that someone took in a certain angle where all of a sudden they became aware of how they were very unaware, right? Or, or very um, unfocused about, about the things that they would do for themselves. They, they became suddenly aware of how dysfunctional their eating habits have been and how they let themselves go and i've seen this with businesses as well where all of a sudden they're made aware that hey there's no more escrows in the pipeline because they spent too much time trying to focus on closing the deals that all of a sudden they became aware that they weren't making the necessary deposits and for me a big thing was you know i would take sudden vacations with my family right because you know, uh, I, I felt the guilt of the constant deposits I was making to my business and not necessarily to my family. And when you take a sudden uh, approach to something 
or become suddenly aware. It is a slow buildup to those things. It doesn't mean just because you become aware, all of a sudden the issue is going to be fixed. And it builds up over time. And that's why we have to be sure that we're making the right decisions so that we can have the results we truly desire. From that, as I look at where I was at on Thursday and, and then now the decisions I'm going to make here on a Monday, all right, the decisions I'm going to make in the, here on a Monday equates to not only hundreds of thousands of dollars, but millions. And it's just a, a sudden contrast that if I can't take care of this without losing my cool, I will never be able to achieve that. It's kind of like that old saying, right? Tripping over dollars to pick up pennies. Focus so much on the little things that you don't see that there's a bigger picture. I can only imagine if I got into a, 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 an argument with my, with my contractor, burning down bridges when I have to work, down with, work with this guy for the next six months. Why am I going to all of a sudden make my problem his problem? And this is what we have to think about as we start growing a business that you will get the results you desire, but it will feel like it's all of a sudden after a gradual deposit, right? Gradual deposits over time. Sudden results are not sustainable. Sudden results that you get picked, that, that people paint um, for you, right? If you come to this company, you will get all these results. It's not sustainable. And oftentimes, it's just a marketing ploy and not having your best interest in mind. This is the kind of thing we have to think about as well. That if you do the right things, you will be made aware of sudden big results. I look at my life, I look at what I have, and I'm like, how did this happen? But I know that it was a gradual process that sometimes felt like it was going nowhere. A, a process that has more stairs going upward than slides going down, right, uh, of the fruits, like the old game shoots and ladders. And the reality is it's going to be a climb for you, and sometimes the climb feels like it's going the wrong way, like you're not even progressing. But when you look at your life, all of a sudden you have things that you never thought were possible. You're making decisions based on things you, you, you couldn't even decide a year before that. The problems that you're facing right now, you weren't good enough to have a year ago. The decisions I'm making now, I didn't have the capacity to make a year ago. They're here now because that's the next logical step. It's scary, but it's a gradual buildup of capacity. It's the gradual buildup of skill set and mindset. The decisions that feel all of a sudden and that I'll be making uh, this week, I, I couldn't even fathom that a year ago or two years ago. And that's what the, the beauty about growth, sustainable growth, that it's going to require a skill set that you sharpen on a consistent basis to sustain it long term. Yet many get lured in by the shiny object, by, by the easy, thinking that the path that they're on is the wrong path. If you're doing the right things, how could it be the wrong path? It's when you do the wrong things that you get misled by the wrong light thinking that they have it figured out for you when you know that this is a gradual process and it's going to slowly build up, right? It's going to slowly build up until you're making decisions that you never thought you could make ever before. And th the same thing goes. If, if you don't keep your eyes focused and intentional, it also builds up to all of a sudden your spouse is asking for divorce. And it's a decision that we all have to make. I remember when Carla asked for a divorce and I was like, how did this happen? All of a sudden? No, it was a gradual process of not being focused and intentional. It was a gradual process of just not being uh, loving and patient. And all of a sudden it feels like things are going the wrong way, but it was a gradual deposit towards the wrong things. And one of the things that I want to emphasize is that success is a, is a very gradual process. It's slow building. It's, it's one of these things that during the time you're in, it feels like it doesn't move at all. But all of a sudden, you have these blessings in your life that you're like, how did this occur? And I've seen it time and time again. 
where the struggle is real. It pushes you to the core. You may be emotionally broken. And I remember being in that place. As things started not working in my favor, or so I thought, right? The, the stairs were going downwards. And, and, I've, and I've mentioned this before. In 2018, um, you know, just a series of, of, of a lot of things not going my way. The profitability was down. Uh, agents kept on leaving over and over. And, and I remember one agent in particular, it, it felt like that, that I, I was going to break. And, and I did. I, I broke down. And, and the thing is, like, I couldn't even contain my emotion. It, was, it hit me to the core, right? Because I, I thought, like, everything was going to fall apart. And, and when you're in this place of negativity, it truly feels that way, right? Like, that you can't do anything to fix it. You can't do anything to shift the tides of where everything is going. But that's so important that we keep that as the main focus, that when things are going south, you don't stop doing the right things. Because if you go down south with it, it only makes things worse. And that's the initial, you know, thought that we all have. It's like, I got to stop all these other things. I, ca I can't work out anymore. I have to stop, you know, it, it marketing right now because I got to focus on this one thing. Like, that's where naturally we all want to go, but we got to force ourselves to do the right things. And I remember I broke down and I was like, I can't believe this has happened. And I literally in that space, like when, when things are not going your way, you start thinking the worst. And I broke down and, and, and this time I had an audience, right? Um, I had a, a former employee who did a lot of the stuff my media guys do now, just like, look at me. And he probably thought that I was going to go down and close down. In fact, I know that's what he was thinking because two weeks later, you know, he mentioned that he was leaving. And, you know, that was another thing that my mind was like, oh, here goes one more thing. But one of the things that I did during that process is I stuck to the game plan, right? Even though it was painful, maybe it's not as intentional, but I stuck to making the deposits where they were needed. Even though I was broken to the core, I, I, I still was doing the right things. And, and what that was telling me is that I needed to shed myself from certain individuals, from believing that I needed others, right? Or I, anything that I wanted to build what's outside of me. I need to believe that everything that I wanted to create was all within me, not one person, not one business, not one individual can ever break down where I'm going, can never break down my conviction of what I want. That's the lesson I needed to learn. I can't be caught up on, on, on just one at a time when I have millions in my mind. And that's the path that I need to go on. But it was tough. But I stuck to the game plan. And I knew that if I just made, and I, it was this internal feeling that if I do the right things, eventually the right outcomes would come. So I stuck to the game plan day in and day out. And it was hard. It was difficult because my mind wanted to tell me to quit, to stop, go find the easy path. And within two years, we, we moved into this building. And, and we were able to make personal purchases that I just, I mean, just, it doesn't even make sense. The compound effect doesn't make sense because those deposits start morphing into results that don't even make sense. Like I wasn't supposed to be there at the end of 2018. And then within two years, move into a building while the entire world is, is crumbling down, right? Through the COVID um, um, scare. The economy's crashing. The scare is, is real, right? They're pushing all, all the, the, the agenda of you should shut down. And because I went through that, I, I was able to build the capacity to keep going. But it was a gradual process, and you don't know when the blessings will come. Your job is just to continue to realize that sustainable results will take time. And then when you're there, it feels like it happened all of a sudden. Because I truly feel it happened all of a sudden. <laughs> when in fact, it was a steady process of struggle. But I was willing to endure. I was willing to pivot and move. And regardless of what's happening right now, 
This is the responsibility you must hold on to. You can't allow your mind and your thoughts to stop you from the progression. This is where you declare that you belong in this industry. This is where you declare that you're going to get more market share. Or you can go down this path like most agents, where they're afraid and inconsistent to showcase who they are and what they do. Because, well, the results are not necessarily in alignment right now. But for those of you that decide that this is a slow progression, we'll realize big results. And this is still a transition year. But if you're able to transition accordingly, doing the right things, 2024 is going to be an unbelievable year for you. Mark my words. It's going to be something you never thought was possible. And it's going to feel like it was all of a sudden. But in the midst of it, it's a slow moving process and you may be hurting right now. You may be f feeling less confident. Things are not working out in your way. But keep your eye on that vision. Continue to take the small steps and don't let the negativity build something that you're not going to, I wanted to say smell, right? But you're not going to enjoy. And it could be one of two ways. It could be this path of growth and expansion or it could be this sewage building up where it starts raining down on you, where it starts bringing you down as far as where you think you can go and focusing on the wrong things. So guys, this is what it's all about. Slow building, slow building. Don't let that pipe, the sewage pipe sl slowly build. Let the growth and expansion build to something great. <sighs> so guys, I, I hope that you were able to, to you know, put your own struggles um, into my story and, and, and realize that this is only the beginning for you, but we all have to go through it. Sometimes we have to be in the stench of it all. I got one. Thank you for not giving up and encouraging myself and I'm, sh I'm sure many others to just keep going and not to give up. And that's the game right there, guys, especially right now. So write down on your agenda what you're going to achieve. And I, I got to tell you, like I'm looking at my agenda. I'm like, how in the hell am I really making these type of decisions? <laughs> am I really going to go down this path where it seems like what I'm going to do this week used to take me years? The decisions that I'm making, the investments I'm I'm, I'm going after are, are really here. But listen, I, I didn't have to realize what was going to happen in five years. I just had to be in the middle of the struggle and, and understand that I have to do the right things day in and day out. I'm not going to let the negativity build up. I'm, I'm not going to be the, the sewage pipe, right, where more negativity comes out to, to a point where you cannot avoid it. Everyone in your family will notice or they will notice the powerful version that you knew was within you. So guys, I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. Have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye now. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Badass Agents Podcast, brought to you by AZ and Associates and Do The Work Coaching and Consulting. You can watch this and other episodes by subscribing to our channel on YouTube or by visiting us directly at badassagents.com. And of course, you can listen to this episode and many others on your preferred podcast provider.